Hi everybody, it's DC here again here. Uh, under the heading Nikola Tesla's scalar waves equals Newton's cradle. Um, the comparison between scalar waves and uh, Newton's cradle. Uh, we've got X, Y axis here and this is the spark gap. So this is what Nikola Tesla re refers to as the event. This line here represents high voltage and two sets. We've got a, up to a certain level of voltage, you've got just Hertzian waves. But if you go for a bigger spark with a bigger impact, if you like, then it goes to a, a scalar wave, which is a different type of wave again. So this higher voltage here, 30,000 volts, is a scalar wave. Um, it's a bit hard to get your head around, but I'm, I'm understanding it more each day. So here we've got this line here, X re represents a distance which can be any distance. And what I want you to do is link the distance with Newton's cradle. Yeah, Newton's, well, I'll put some um, images in of Newton's cra cradle and you, hopefully you can realize what's going on. What we've got here is the solar system. There's the old current bone, the sun, and we've got some planets going out. This one here represents the earth. There is the, in an event and also an event in Hertzian waves which takes a long time and a scalar event which is instant. So this here from the Sun going out is distance. So this scalar wave is instant. It can go out as far as you like. It's instant I don't, to infinity. To infinity because of all these little, if you want to call these uh, gr green circles, uh, the word for it is ether. It's the ether, it's space, it's everything. It's, it's, uh, that's what I'm getting my head around is all these little lines here. So uh, I hope you can get your head around distance, the, the space, we've got the solar system and the difference between the two Hertzian wave, which takes a long time and the scalar wave, which is instant. Thank you very much. I hope to do more on this scalar. It's a complicated subject, but I'm getting my head around it. Thank you very much for listening. DC signing out. this button and this button and that button so there's three modes so what i'm going to do is you see i'll grab one of the balls here i'll pull it back get there change to the color and here we go now you notice here it's already stopping it's slowing down the ball's in the middle look at it now what we see is standing wave we see that we have nodes and we have the anti-node we could, if we want, we could measure the wavelength. We could talk about frequency. We could also vary the tension and see how that affects the properties of the wave. What I like about this is it's something that you can have going in your classroom